isn't really a question, but it's a comment. My first reaction, well, not my first reaction, but I soon after first hearing about the NSA keeping all the bits, was one of total frustration because doing digital preservation um, for 15 years, some of the hard bits are doing it at the scale we need to do it. And clearly, our tax dollars have paid for a lot of infrastructure and software that would be tremendously useful to um, many of us. And I'd like to have it. So I, don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be an apologist for the for the NSA. I just point out that we have been here before. Um, DARPA created the internet and took what 20, 30 years before it was privatized. So there's. Maybe naive hope. Um, as a counterpoint to that, uh, the problem with digital preservation is not the NSA's difference is that they have a great way of blackmailing the polity to acquire the money. Secondly, you want to be very skeptical about anything that you hear about the technology. They claim that the Bluffdale Youth Center will store yottabytes of data. Well, it won't in the foreseeable future because yottabytes are many orders of magnitude more than the entire output of the storage industry. Uh, so people are lying to them. They also claim that they cannot search their own internal email. If they can't do that, why are they collecting all this stuff? Because they clearly can't use it. So you are being radically lied to. I was going to say, uh, so the thing of iWire and games like uh, uh, and, and crowd, crowd gamification or something like that, how did you guys think of the idea of, of creating a, uh, you know, a game of that sort? Uh, and then how did you, you know, implement that? That's a good question, yeah. So there are, there's actually an entire sort of realm of the world that most people don't know about called citizen science. Uh, one of the first ones was, is called Fold It. Um, you might have heard of it. They're, they have hundreds of thousands of people now. It's been around for several years. And people uh, are better than computer programs at figuring out the 3D structure of proteins, so basically amino acid chains. And they put out challenges to players, and these players team up, and they compete against each other. And they, they kind of famously solved the, the enzyme confirmation of uh, like the tertiary formation of some enzyme that was implicated in HIV that had been a mystery for decades. <laughs> um, and so there's a lot of projects out there. Fullet is one, um, Zooniverse, uh, you, NASA has a bunch of projects where you can discover new celestial bodies, help them categorize galaxies. Um, National Geographic does species counts in national parks in Africa by having people analyze motion capture images. There's a lot of these projects out there. And so we drew inspiration from those. Um, this is the first neuroscience citizen science project. Um, and we, we actually didn't know if it would work, but we saw that there were other projects that people seem to be into, and you know, it's a great way to spend your time if you're, if you're a gamer and you're interested in science, but to help understand you know, how the brain works. Um, how we did it, we have, we have developers um, and grad students, and we hire other people, we get a lot of interns. We have graphic design interns over the summer, they're really amazing. Um, it's not an explicitly funded project, actually Sebastian just built it out of general lab funds, but that's sort of changing now. So yeah. And we also have, um, we've got an API, so if anyone's a developer or working on an API, and we're also building education curriculums to get into schools and whatnot. If you're interested in that, come find me.
all those voices and stories have sort of drifted away. It's always been, you know, is maybe the only way to truly leave a mark on the world is to build the 700 story building or to like carve your face in the mountainside. Um, but I think we're trying to figure out a way around that. And part of that is just being able to keep this stuff. Um, you know, that picture of the parrots, that's actually the Smithsonian. That's awesome. But there is a reasonable question to ask, like, do we really need all those parrots? I think one interesting thing about that is, is the sense of community, right? So they've you know, built things and then didn't tell people about them. And that violates your sense of community. I mean, if you think about human history, I mean, how many millions of people have died because one religious community is against another religious community? Or even now, communities and kingdoms. And I think now we're in this hyper-digital age where we can have a global community. but it, it, it raises this issue of you know what do you share and how do you how do you build communities that share the right amount because people in those communities are sort of different. I mean what we've seen what you were even talking about the crowdfunding you know if you, you need an existing community for it to work and even for iWire the game was in public beta for eight months before we launched but we had no community and no one played until we just started talking to people and sharing what we were doing and you know giving them progress reports even if it was start with ten people but then you could have I think that's a true point, I think. Um, you know, we're in some ways we're moving from an age in which the internet was kind of sharing by default to more an age of proactive sharing, where we're choosing to en engage in these activities, um, rather than just have our data kind of taken from us as a kind of price for having a cool new toy. So and I think crowdfunding, I think the sharing economy that people talk about, you know, I think is another example of that. So, and also these kind of um, crowdsourced projects and um, those are people who are proactively choosing to share in a community. Yeah, and we don't, we don't have a good way yet to think about how those get carved out. There is no metadata standard for community. Um, each one is a little different. So. Okay, winding back a little way. I, I, I think it's important to realize that the business model of the intelligence agency depends on exaggerating their powers. You should not assume that A, the NSA is collecting everything that they say they're collecting. I have no question that they're collecting an enormous amount. And B, that they are capable of keeping it for a long period of time. Um, at least as far as GCHQ in Britain is concerned, what they're claiming is that they are collecting a huge, well, what they're claiming in an unattributable way by leaking to the newspapers is that they're collecting an awful lot of stuff, but they are uh, winnowing it after about 30 days. And I think that is more plausible than the idea that they're collecting everything and keeping it forever. Um, the, uh, the, the <laughs> but in order to, to get the funding to do what they want to do, they they have to uh, they have to exaggerate their capabilities, and then they have to cover up the failure of their actual capabilities to live up to the capabilities that they advertise in order to get the funding. So that becomes a kind of sort of fascinating design fiction where they're yeah. trying to build there's, the business. There's, there's this wonderful marine ex marine colonel called um, I think his name is Robert Steele, uh, who. Um, was given the task of, as a planning exercise in the Marines of organizing the invasion of Argentina. And he was given access to the, the intelligence community's entire uh, database on, on Argentina. And he did the thing twice, once using only classified sources and once using only open source sources that you can find on the internet. The plan for, for the, the open source plan was far better and there was far more information open source that it wasn't classified. Uh, and um, um, that's when you left the room. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. Well, thank you all very much and thanks to our panelists. This concludes our program for today and uh, sort of the main part of Digital Preservation 2013.